Hey there, Joe Braun here, the DCS Mech Warriors. In this video, we're going to be talking about the built-in voltage sensor. Let me switch over to my desktop and we'll get started here. So I've been trying to think about how to make this a little more interesting as I open up a few uh, of the folders here. So I'm going to Team Code and Java. Uh, what I want to do is actually just start from scratch with the voltage sensor. I've been trying to figure out how to make it a little more interesting. What we're going to do is control a DC motor with it. So we're actually going to just start from scratch instead of layering in uh, on the other sensors that we've done in previous lessons. So I've gone to new member training and I'm going to our basic teleop structure that we did in like the second video in the series, I think it was. You can go back in the video uh, playlist and figure that out. Um, but I'm going to right click on this and go down to copy. And then I'm going to come down to our YouTube folder where we've been storing everything and click paste. And I'm going to just call this one Volt Sensor. Um, you can't call it Voltage Sensor because there is a class inside the repository with that name. So I'm just going to call it Volt Sensor uh, for our example here. Push Enter. And it's going to refactor uh, this copy of the uh, original teleop structure that we did back in, I think it was video two, lesson two. Uh, but anyway, we've got, got this done. Um, so let me close the side menu. Actually, uh, let me open up my notes before I do that. So I'm going down to the voltage sensor and opening up my example op mode, pull that down to the bottom so we can see both of them. So we got this basic teleop structure that we start with when we make an op mode. Um, makes it a little faster than typing all this out and having to remember it. Um, and then I've got my notes down here at the bottom. So we'll just start going through that. Um, we are going to use this to control a DC motor. So I'm going to put this in the config file uh, right here. Actually, I want control hub also. So let me grab that. And we're going to paste that in here. And I guess I probably should get rid of the extra asterisk since we pasted. And there we go. So the only thing that we're going to be uh, doing in the configuration file, uh, we have to manually go in and put in our DC motor. We did this earlier in the uh, series when we talked about DC motors, but we're going to revisit that today uh, with this particular video. So uh, we do want to leave this disabled in our classroom here. Uh, you will obviously want to comment uh, this out so that it will show up on your driver hub. Um, but I'm going to, for our classroom, go ahead and leave that disabled so it doesn't mess up any of the uh, students' code while they're messing with stuff here. Um, and then we're going to change this to examples as far as the group uh, because that's what we've been doing the entire series. So um, let me put that in there. And we are going to leave it as teleop. And then uh, when we copied, we refactored the class to be our bolt sensor um, op mode. So that's all set up. Our basic uh, structure for our run op mode is already set, but we'll come back to this as we create more methods to put in there. And then we've got our basic init hardware that where we basically put our uh, hardware stack as far as the pieces we're going to use. Again, we'll come back to that here in a minute. What I want to do first of all is start creating some methods for the setup of each piece of hardware. So the first piece we want to do is going to be our actually our voltage sensor. I'm going to click on the bracket here to get it out of that simplified form uh, more into a more recognizable form of our method and then I'll paste that in here. So uh, we haven't done any variables immediately. I noticed that because uh, this has turned red, so we're going to have to fix that here in just a second. We'll go up and do some global variables, um, but we're, we're creating a method. So we've got our public access modifier. It's not returning in any information, so it's void. And then our name, we know this is a function or a method because of the parentheses. And then our code bracket of what to execute when this particular method is called. Okay, so we've got that set up. Let me go ahead and do our DC motor. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on the DC motor because we have done that in previous videos. I'm just going to paste that in there. If you are new to this particular um, video series, then you're going to want to go back and refresh um, to figure out what all these things do. Uh, we have a whole video dedicated on setting up DC motors. There's like four four videos, I believe. Um, so again, we're getting a lot of red stuff because I forgot to do the uh, variables in the beginning. So let me jump back up there. So here's our global variables. They always go right below the class name. So um, to save time so that you don't have to watch me type slow, uh, I am going to just paste those in. So they go again right under the class name. So I'm going to put a couple enters. I'm going to paste that in and then talk about them real quick. 
So in our imports, we should see a class for a voltage sensor and a DC motor. So let's go up and check that. So it should automatically import the DC motors and voltage sensors because we're re referring to those classes down here with these variables. And because we have on the flies set up, we did that in the setup video way back, uh, video zero, I think is what we called that one. Um, it's pulled in these automatically. So it's referring to a class uh, the access modifier is private so that it can't be accessed outside this class. And then we set our uh, variable name in lower camel case, lower case V. So this is a class call and this is a variable because this is what we call lower camel case. This is upper camel case. All right. And then um, we're going to create a double. So a, a storage space that will include decimals for the voltage sensor threshold. And we'll explain that a little bit later. And then we have our two settings for um, our DC motor. Well, we have the variable for our DC motor and our variable name. And then two more settings that we'll use a little bit later when we get into the logic of setting up our teleop controls. Okay, so our variables are all in place. Let's go check out our uh, hardware maps. Well, our init for each one of these, and you notice that all the red is gone because it now knows what each one of those are. It's pulled in the class uh, as we discussed for the import. So it now has uh, turned everything to these nice purple colors rather than all the red. So uh, let me talk about the init voltage sensor. In the init voltage sensor, we're setting our variable equal to the hardware map. So we're getting our Java name uh, to match up with the config name in a hardware map. But in this particular one, it's not done in the configuration file. So you don't see uh, like motor one down here is matching up. The Java name is matching up to the configuration name. This is built in and to access that built in voltage sensor, this is the way that you do that on this piece. And then down here, again, we've talked about the uh, DC motor in previous videos. So you can back up in the series and get that, or you can just uh, pause the video and go ahead and type this in. Um, so our uh, hardware is all set up. Now what we got to do is use it. So what we want to do is come back up to our init hardware. And what we do is uh, method stacking, what we call method stacking. So all of our hardware pieces will go in this init hardware. So what we want to do is put our voltage sensor in here. And then we're going to put our uh, DC motor. So motor motor one, push tab, and that'll fill in for me. So any piece of hardware that I've created a method for, for all the settings and the setup, um, I would create those down here and then put those in the method stack. And then that method stack is called up here in the big picture when we do our run op mode. So we don't have lines and lines of code inside run op mode. We're basically segmenting that out. Um, so that we can see the logical big picture of what's happening in our op mode down here. And then the individual pieces in the setup is down below. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and set up our telemetry. So we always put our telemetry at the end. Um, so I'm going to go down here in my notes and grab that. So we're doing sensor telemetry. I'm going to copy this and paste that in there. Uh, we've got this uh, line of code that keeps being a holdover from things that we did in the uh, in pre previous seasons, and I forgot to delete that out before I made the video. Um, if you ever see this line of code, you want to get rid of it. It's in a lot of example code, uh, but basically it's clearing out the log for the telemetry, and that takes up a lot of time uh, when executing, and we've noticed that it causes some problems when you do that uh, in, in op mode, specifically in competition setting. Uh, you'll, you'll get a delay and lag uh, when you're running sensor telemetry with that line of code, the log clear uh, in there. And so we've started removing that, speeds up our processing a lot, um, a lot faster. Uh, our robot responds a lot faster. So we recommend getting rid of that. Um, so in our sensor telemetry, we're just pulling whatever the voltage is on our uh, voltage sensor um, and putting that out to the screen so that we can actually see it. Um, some teams, including ours, use a actual voltage meter in line um, with the power system to display that on the robot, which we find is better. But for this, we want to actually see what the robot um, is registering through the control system on the voltage sensor because we're going to use that to control the motor. So we're going to output it just so we can see what it is. 
All right, so that's all set up. Now what we've got to do, basically at this point, the video could be done if we didn't do anything with it. So I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how you could use the voltage sensor um, because everything is uh, actually set up. We're not actually displaying our telemetry or anything yet, um, but uh, we, we got to come up with some way to use it. So we pulled in our DC motor and we set up the variables for that and we've set up the init for the motor. So these are all the settings to actually run the motor and it's actually initialized, but we're not doing anything with it. So what we wanna do is revisit the teleop controls that we used for this particular motor. I'm double checking just to make sure I haven't missed anything so far, I think we're good. So the last piece is to actually use that voltage sensor to do something. And what we're gonna do is use this function right here that we um, called teleop controls for our team. And we're gonna drop that in right below the init of the motor. So I'm gonna put that right here and let's explain it. So back in the first DC motor lesson, we talked about using buttons to control the DC motor. And that's fairly straightforward. If you push button X, it's gonna put the motor uh, rotating backwards, so a negative um, full power. And then if you push A, it's gonna stop it, so it's gonna put it to zero power. And then if you push B, um, it's gonna put it in uh, full power forward, so it's positive, this one's negative, okay? So those, those are fairly straightforward, especially if you understand conditional statements. If this is true, execute this code inside this code block. If this is true, you're pushing button A, go ahead and execute this, and if you're pushing B, go ahead and execute this, okay? So what we wanna do with these controls, we've got our motor going in a direction, or maybe it's stopped, okay? But if we push B and it's going in a forward direction, and say this is on an intake for um, something on your robot and the motor stalls, um, something gets caught and causes the motor to stop. Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a voltage spike. Your voltage is usually gonna drop, if I remember right, um, below anything that's functional as far as running a robot. So it might drop below, say, nine volts or something. I think that might be the number I used up here. Um, okay, so if our voltage drops below nine volts, um, what we wanna do is recognize that and get our robot to automatically respond to that condition and do something different. So what we've done is added this conditional statement, which is pretty, um, well, not very complex, but a lot more complex than these um, conditional statements up here, okay? So we'll come back and explain that, but basically, if this is true, what I want you to understand at this point is if all of this is true, and we'll break this down, then execute this piece of code. Well, what this piece of code is setting, um, it's, it's assuming that the motor is going in the positive direction uh, with this statement up here. And what it's gonna do is set the motor to spin in the opposite direction, so the negative direction, if this condition is met. And what we're doing is looking for a stalled motor. So motor one, um, if we get the power off of the voltage sensor, and that's equal to motor one. Um, so motor one power up here, come back up here. So uh, motor one power is set to one. So it's at 100%, it's going, um, it's in the intake mode, so it's trying to pull something in. If the power, is set to uh, run at full speed forward. So that's what this one says. And I have it in parentheses just to make it stand out a little more. It actually wouldn't be required. Um, and I probably should put this one here in parentheses also just to make it stand out on its own as its own conditional. So this parentheses right here, this condition is met because we've pushed button B. It's going in the positive direction. And so this condition is met, and so this one's met, and this one has to be met. So the other conditional is that the voltage sensor, if we get its voltage, and that's less than or equal to the threshold. So it's below the threshold that we set up here, nine. So the power, say, drops to five volts um, because the motor is stalled, and it's eating up a lot of power, so the registered voltage is five volts then it's gonna set the motor to the opposite direction, hopefully kick out in an intake situation, kick out whatever was in its way 
um, so that that motor is cleared. And then you can manually go ahead and say, at this point, uh, we want it to go in the positive direction, try to pick something else up. You would push button B and be able to move forward with your um, operation, whatever you're trying to do with your robot, okay? All right, so at this point, I started wrapping up the video, but in editing, I noticed there was a couple problems. So I'm breaking into my own video to uh, update some problems. So the first thing I noticed uh, before I go any further is that threshold is misspelled. So good chance to go over refactoring. There's an extra H here. So I'm gonna right click, go down to refactor, and then rename and get rid of this H, extra H here and push enter. And so that's gonna refactor it all the way through the uh, op mode. That's not the reason I could have dealt with that one if uh, that was the only error. Uh, but we created all of these functions down here for teleop controls and sensor telemetry, but we never used them. Uh, thus the reason this one's grayed out. So we need to come back up here to the run op mode and actually use those for this to work. So uh, our init hardware is in the correct spot. But right here in the while loop while waiting to press play, we need to actually use our sensor telemetry. So I'm going to start to type sensor and then it's highlighted uh, highlighting telemetry. So I'm going to push tab and that's going to add that in there. I'm going to come down here after we press play, we need to do the same thing in this while loop at our sensor telemetry so that it's outputting to the driver hub. So sensor telemetry and push tab. And then this is where we want to use our telehealth controls. So we got to add that also. So let me go ahead and teleop controls and tab. And now those two things are fixed. We have our telemetry in the right spot. And we have our teleop controls in the right spot. So now this op mode will actually work. I'm gonna to toss it back to the original recording and close this out now. So hopefully that makes the voltage sensor a little more interesting, trying to get, give you an idea of how you could use it to control something. Again, uh, my team is using their control hub I don't have an actual robot to test this out on, but uh, logically this should should make sense, uh, should, should work out. You might have to play around with it a little bit because this particular part I didn't get to test. Um, so take that for what it's worth, just an idea of how you could use it, um, play around with it on your robot, hopefully give you some ideas. So looks like in the next video, uh, we're gonna be talking about TensorFlow object detection. So if you're interested in that particular video, go ahead and stick around in the series and we will catch you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.